Hewlett Packard Technology is founded in a garage in Palo Alto, California, and is considered by many to be the birthplace of Silicon Valley. An earthquake in Chile kills 30,000 people, covers an area of 50,000 square miles, and the University of Oregon defeats Ohio State University 46-33 in Evanston, Illinois, to win the very first NCAA men's basketball tournament. The year is 1939. For those that don't know, at the direction of Alfred Sloan, who was General Motors CEO, made the companionship make program, which was offered in the late 20s. It provided a junior make for all of GM's brands, except for Chevy and General Motors. Oakland got Pontiac. Oldsmobile Viking, which Viking was the senior model. Buick, Marquette, Cadillac got LaSalle. Pontiac and Oakland switched. LaSalle was on offer at GM from 1927 through 1940. 1939, LaSalle could be had as a convertible sedan, convertible coupe, two-passenger coupe, five-passenger two-door touring sedan, five-passenger four-door touring sedan. Designed by Do 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 Harley Earl, 1939 saw a bit of a redesign. So let's compare 38 on top, 39 on the bottom, starting in the front. Both the 38 and 39 have alligator style hood openings. Bumpers, grills are totally different. Fenders also look different. The 38 has rounder fenders, whereas the 39 has a more pronounced line on the fenders. Headlights are mounted in different areas, but not just that. The headlight buckets, for lack of a better term, the 38s are mounted on the fenders, whereas the 39s are mounted to the side of the hood just above the catwalk region. Moving to the side profile, look at this image. Doesn't the 38 look longer? To me, it looks longer, but in reality, the 38 is 201 inches long, whereas the 39 is 202 and a half inches long. It's super interesting because the 38 looks longer. Louvers are different between these two. There is way more bright work on the 39 than there is on the 38. Around the windows, running board trim, rear fenders are also different. Hubcaps have been revised. Moving to the rear, both have in-body trunks, single back glass on 39 versus split on the 38. Brake lights differ as well as trunk handles, jumping inside to take a better look at the interior and dash situation, which both are totally different. Which one do you like better? Let's talk specs. 202 and a half inches long. It rides a wheelbase of 124 inches. It weighs 3,830 pounds. Price. $1,385, which is equivalent to you spending $30,564.26 in the year 2024. Total 1939 LaSalle production was 23,028 units. Moving on to engine, only one engine on offer, 322 cubic inch displacement flathead V8 5.3 liters. It's good for 125 horsepower, 3,400 RPM, an estimated 200 pound feet or 271 newton meters at 1,800 RPM, which is an estimate bore of 3.4 inches and a stroke of 4.5 inches. This engine is backed with a three-speed manual transmission column shift unit. If you've been searching forever for a 1939 LaSalle four-door touring sedan, you're in luck because this one is currently for sale at Classic Auto Mall, Morgantown, Pennsylvania, with over a 1,000 cars for sale when recording this episode. And get this, anybody can go there and peruse their inventory for directions, hours of operation, and to see more pictures, get information pertaining to this very car, be sure to click the link below after the show. Let's talk styling. Just look at these headlights. Just look at all of the different lines inside the headlights. Notice the headlight bezels are painted body color. Just look at these headlight canisters for lack of a better term. They look like Dagmars reversed or torpedoes. Got these like fins. what the bumpers look like 
Just look at how it's layered. This one has accessory lights mounted to the bumpers themselves. Also two overriders and or bumperettes, bumper guards. Look at these side grills and the main grill where it says LaSalle, nice and proud there. Mascot. This hood design is relatively smooth. It does have an ever so slight center line which goes back to the two-piece windshield. Coming down the side, it's nice bright work here, as well as louvers. Notice this center line in the fender. And it runs all the way back. Beautiful LaSalle hubcaps with beauty rings. The fenders here are rolled. antenna on the driver's side this one has opposing windshield wipers on little tiny pedestals with cowl vent this car does have drip rails that start right here and run the length of the cab <clears throat> running boards I wear size 12 shoe that's how far my foot fits on the running board there it does taper in the back quite drastically and that's what my 12 inch shoe looks like at the back this car does not have gravel guards the rear fender situation it's rolled back here as well Gas filler is on the driver's side. The bumpers mimic the front bumpers, with the only difference being the LaSalle script. This car has two brake lights. Notice they're amber, amber colored. While we're back here, It's a pretty big trunk, all things considered. It has full size spare back here with a place to put stuff on top of the spare tire. Also, notice this car has external trunk hinges. Inside, and this door opens full 90 degrees to allow plenty of access into the cab. Notice this door is all framed out. Here's my fingers for reference. It feels like a broad cloth. Armrest, door handle to get out. Window crank for the big window. Operates like this. This one has a vent, crank out vent window. Which operates like this. And that is a massive vent window. Coming down inside the pedal box down here, high beam switch, clutch, brake, gas pedal, emergency handbrake right here and or parking brake. This is for the blower motor for fan speed. 
for heat. Just take a look at this interior. Here is what over the hood looks like. Here is what first person over the hood looks like. On to the button switches and knobs, starting on the left and moving right. Coolant temperature, amp meter, speedometer with high beam indicator at the top, odometer and trip at the bottom, gasoline gauge, oil pressure, headlights, Delco sensitivity radio, windshield wipers, cowl vent, hand throttle, panel lights, starter, key, ashtray, lighter, clock. Up above, we have sun visors. And they look like this. There's a sun visor there. There is a rear view mirror there in the center. Another sun visor over there for the passengers. On to the glove box test. Here is our test subject. Here is my hand for reference. Here is the glove box in question. And they're all just failing. So the opening isn't big enough to get the camera in that glove box. So it does not fit in this glove box. So this car's got cabinet doors. So just look at that with both of them open. And this uh, center post here in the center. Notice the door in the rear doesn't have armrests on it either. The armrests are attached to the chair themselves. Door handle to get out, window crank for the big window, which operates like this. It does go all the way down, which you could use this as an armrest as well. Let's take a gander at back here. Look at all the space you have. Robe rail on the back of the front chair. Put a heavy blanket on in the winter time. Could also use this as a grab handle. There is an ashtray on both sides. Also notice how flat the floor is back here. It's also raked up here in the front for a footrest. Here is what the front looks like from the back. Let's take a quick gander at the greenhouse or the pillar to glass ratio. Very airy in this car. This is what visibility looks like out the back from the back seat. There is a slight parcel shelf back there. Let's talk about this seat. The seat's very comfortable. It's, uh, it's rather plain, um, but it is super comfortable. The, uh, as you can see, it is slightly reclined. It does bulge out here in the center, dips down in the back. Bench is really wide. But with all that said, I got tons of space between my knees and the back of the seat. If I put my feet out like this, I have even more space. Creature comforts. We have armrests as well as ashtray the windows do slide open in the way back the very back there is a coat hook up there as well as a dome light mounted right there everything that is found on the passenger side is found on the driver's side as well coat hook up there this is what i look like sitting in the back of the lasalle i got tons of head space it is a very comfortable car, this. If you're looking at getting a classic car, and, and but you have a family, this car would be a really good contender. It's different. There's tons of space. There's enough space in this car to, to haul around six people comfortably, like full-size 2020 adults, which is crazy. It also has a center armrest that functions like that. getting underneath the hood the hood release is the blimp a 
Coming to the driver's side, oil filter. Man, it's tight. It's just all crammed in here. It's monoblock V8 down inside there. Got the oil bath air cleaner on top. Carburetor there. Distributors in the back. So notice the springs and the horns. This one has the windshield washer bottle. There's more space on this side. Also notice how the exhaust comes. See how it connects the other side. And then it goes into a downpipe out the back. On the positive side, well-respected make, built solid, nicely styled, good performance for the time period. Very cool way in which to open the hood. Also has a single piece alligator style hood, large in body trunk against it. Body hardware is very scarce. Open models expect to pay premium price. Dash is a little bit basic for this level of car. All right, now it's time for Would You Rather two scenarios today. In the first scenario, would you rather have a 1939 Packard 120 or 1939 LaSalle 3950 or 1939 Lincoln Zephyr? I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free, pause the video. Moving on to the second scenario, 1939 Buick or 1939 LaSalle, or 1939 Chrysler. Once again, I'm gonna leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free, pause the video. Now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to get both the name of the band and the song title correctly in the comment section will have their comment pinned to the top of it. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below. I read and answer all comments posted. I don't say that for self-worth. I say that because this is an automotive community, far more than a car channel, that I'm very much a part of the car community as well. If you have Facebook, we have a Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. If you don't have Facebook and would still like to reach me, send me an email. All of it will be linked in the description below. Just know I appreciate everything that you guys bring in the comment section. I love reading the stories, the critiques, comments. Until next time, toodaloo!